Okay, so this is something I really want to say. This is one of my number one concerns when I was pregnant with twins, and I thought this was going to be really hard. I'd say around five or six months, we had a big shift. That, I think, is the key to getting them to nap. One thing that you would tell yourself the day you found out you were having twins, it almost makes me cry. Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to do a one year in review with you today uh, for these twins. And it is literally crazy that they are over a year old and it's super cliche, but it really goes quick. Days are long, years are short, they say it for a reason. So I wanna go over real quick what their weights are, like where they started and where they are now since we focus so much on growth for these twins, especially with them being IUGR when they were in the womb and being little tiny peanuts. And then I'm gonna go over Q&A from my Instagram. I asked you guys what questions you had as it pertains to a year in review with twins. So if you're not following me on Instagram, Heather Fern XO, that's where the daily content is. I try to post reels and pictures and stories every day for you. So go check it out and let's dive in. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna start with Harpy Girl. Now when they were born or even like before then, length like meant nothing to me. I was always curious what a baby weighed when they were born, but like I I have no idea about length. Um, but Harper was born 18 inches long and that was the second percentile. Uh, and then now she is 20, almost 28 inches long. And that is the seventh percentile. Oh, let me caveat this also that there is no growth chart for twins. My twins were also born a month early, four weeks early. She's at 7% now, but she's just always been small because there's only one, like just your average normal sized baby. That's 50%. I'll take it with a grain of salt. And then for weight, she was born at four pounds, 10 ounces. And now she is like 19 pounds and a few ounces. It's like decimals on this chart. So I don't know the conversion, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, she was born four pounds, 10 ounces, which was a little tiny peanut. She was 0.2%. And then now she is 43%. The lowest she got, yeah, after when we went to like her first pediatrician appointment, she was like just over four pounds, like or four or something like that it was crazy. She was 0.03% on the growth chart. Like that is so tiny. And then Huddy Boy, his length, he was born 19 and a half inches, which was the 42nd percentile. It's now 29 and a half inches, which is the 33rd percentile. Okay. And then for weight, Hudson was born five pounds, six ounces. And that was 0.3. And then now he weighs almost 19 and a half pounds. And that is 18, is that right? Him and Harper are like the same weight. I don't think that's right. There's no way. It says Harper's weighing more than him. And that's literally not possible. I don't know guys. There's their growth. Um, they're t great, healthy. They miraculously literally did not need the NICU when they were born, which we were prepped for the entire time, especially Harper. They've had no health issues. They have had a stomach bug around nine or 10 months and then they got COVID. We all got COVID uh, around 11 months. So, okay, I want to go through these questions that you guys sent. There's a lot and I have a lot of like tips and things I wanna say um, after the first year, but I feel like it's gonna come up in the questions anyway. So I'm just gonna start on the questions and hope it comes up. Okay, you'd think I would have like, and gone through these beforehand, but we're just gonna wing it. I have a lot of questions here, so we'll pick. Do you feel like this was the right time in life to have kids, just turned 26, and I'm thinking? Yes, great question. I wanted to have babies when I was 27, and I did. I had, well, I wanted to have a baby when I turned 27. Yeah, I feel like 27 is good. I mean, I got married, I was 23, so that, like, I guess is on the younger end, but even at the time, like, ready to get married at 23 so we've had a few years we traveled a little bit and 
got to just be together. We've been together a total nine years. So um, I definitely feel like it's good to give yourself that time if that's what you want. But um, I wanted to be done having kids in general by age 30 if possible. I still like don't know if we're gonna have any more babies. I don't think, but it's not totally off the table. We said like a year from now, will like circle back. Is baby boy or baby girl harder to handle? I would say in general, Harper is just more hot and cold. Um, Hudson is like pretty even keel, but Harper, you just like don't know. Like when she's happy, she's so happy and cute and giggly. And then like if Hudson brushes up against her when she's not in the mood, like full laid out screaming. So that's gonna transpire into something really fun when she's a toddler. <laughs> How do you get them on a schedule? That is a goal once my twins arrive. Okay, this is like one of my top, 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 top tips. Schedule is life around here. People in the beginning were like, you're a little intense about your schedule and feeding a nap. You have to be. I don't have a single baby, I just have the twins, so this is all I know. But what I've gathered is when you just have one baby, you know, when they show you hunger cues, you feed them, you kind of are on their schedule rolling with them. Um, and you are on baby's schedule, like even with twins, but like if Hudson woke up in the night and wanted to eat, we woke Harper up too. We did that until, I don't know, like eight weeks or 10 weeks, whenever the pediatrician said they're fine to sleep through the night. We noticed Harper was, Harper was waking up more and wanting to eat. So we stopped waking during the night, but they still, they nap at the same time. It's really, really rare that we get off schedule. Um, I try to keep like wake time, like if Harper wakes up from her nap a little earlier than normal, I try like within 30 minutes. At this point I could do kind of like 45 minutes if she's really early and like let Hudson keep sleeping, then for the next nap, I'll push her like 20 minutes later than her wake window and push him 20 minutes early and try to sink him back up again. But um, I need it for my own sanity. I really love having those nap time breaks still right now, clean up the tornado of a playroom, um, you know, whatever you have to do during nap time, just rest. So all I have to say, like I just really, really, really recommend being, don't care worry about what other people say, like feed them at the same time. Plus I tandem nursed. Um, so I literally fed them at the same time for, I nursed up until 10 months. I'm sure that's in here somewhere. I'll get to that later. But we just did everything as much as we could at the same time. My husband also works from home. So I was able to use, you know, his help um, when there were things that we needed to do at the same time. Something that was easier than you expected it to be. Okay, so this is something I really want to say. This is one of my number one concerns when I was pregnant with twins, and I thought this was going to be really hard, but I've actually had an epiphany about it lately. I thought that having twins would mean I wouldn't get to sh like give them the attention that I would give one baby. And I'm sure in ways that that is true because I do divide my attention between the two of them. Um, especially lately, since they've turned a year, they are very clingy to me. Like if one is holding on to me, the other wants to be holding on to me and they'll like cry because I'm not giving them my full attention. So that's been tough. But my epiphany was that I think I spend way more time dialed in with them than if it was just one baby. Like if I'm only taking care of one of them at a time, I find myself trying to do a lot more while also having them with me, like multitasking or like keeping up with just like my normal life, but also having a baby. You can't do that with twins. Like you are so, you can't, you can't like multitask. You just have to be in it. I mean, I could put them in like their playpen or their little skip hop activity standing things and they can't go anywhere. But I feel like I actually spent a lot more time playing with them and dialed in than I would with just one because you have to, because you can't multitask. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm, I literally just repeated myself. That is easier than I thought. I thought that was gonna be a big emotional issue. Um, yeah, a lot and lots and lots of questions back to schedule, but like with sleep specifically, like how'd you get them on a nap schedule? My twins just wanna be rocked to sleep. How do you adjust to having two at once with schedules and feeds and sleep? So the beginning is really tough. I mean, I wish I wrote down really specific notes to keep track of like when things shifted. I mean, it's really tough in the beginning. As much as I tried really hard to be like present 
and not get like so overwhelmed. Like those first few months really are a blur and they might be with like a single baby too, but especially with the twins, um, you just like four week old twins. Someone said they have four week old twins and like they're super tired. Yeah, you're gonna be tired for a bit still. My babies are a year old and I'm tired. I bet like parents with 16 year old twins say that they're tired. I'm trying to remember in the beginning with naps, they weren't necessarily napping at the same time. I'd say around five or six months, we had a big shift. I just remember like month five felt really hard for me. You know, with those newborn days, they just sleep a lot. You just feed them and change them and then they sleep and then you do it over and over and over. And it's hard because you do it often, so you're not really sleeping. That's why you're just so exhausted. And if you aren't doing it at the same time, it's like one baby, one baby, one baby, and you're like, dying and there's days of course where it didn't totally work out timing wise um i tried to be a little flexible so not like killing myself over my schedule you know once they get through that newborn sleepiness it was they're still so little i couldn't really get them on a schedule yet so they would sleep when they would sleep in around five or six months um i remember it just being really hard because they're a bit more active and they want to play more but then they weren't able to get on the same schedule so i was just it was just like constant so around, yeah, six months, we started putting them down for naps in their crib. We had the snoop bassinets in our room and they slept there until five months. Hudson started to get too long and his head was hitting the snoo. <laughs> so um, then we moved, moved them into their cribs. Basically like, yes, try your best to be on a schedule, but I'd say those first six months, like just do the best you can. I just kind of feel like I haven't given them the option to not be good nappers. Of course they have off days, but we are so like good with our naps. I put like, we're very quick. I don't do like a whole routine or anything. Um, I'm really good about wake windows. I think that's super important. So I mean, you could Google search wake windows and there's a whole bunch of different graphics on uh, what's appropriate for your baby's age, for how long they should be awake between naps. So right now we're still doing like three hours or so, maybe three and a half um, if we're out and doing something. That I think is the key to getting them to nap. Maybe my babies are just good nappers. I don't know, maybe I just got lucky, but. I just really haven't given them the option to not be a good napper. Wake windows are important. What's the best thing about having twins? <sighs> it's just fun. Like, I don't know, it feels cool to be a twin mom. I feel really accomplished. I feel like it's good for like my confidence. I just feel like a really capable person. Um, I'm a really good mom. It's really, really hard. And so every time I get through the day, I'm like, I did it. Like. We did it, even if it's a hard day or if it's a really good day. <laughs> and of course you just have two little babies that, that like now they're interacting a lot more. I feel like our twins, like from the beginning, haven't been super close with each other. Like they never were like really cuddly and cute with each other. Almost like on the contrary, like Harper would be like, do not touch me. Like, but now that they're getting older, they're interacting more. And I mean, whenever we go out, many people say something to us. I never am annoyed when people say stuff to us. I mean, but it literally is every time. Every time we go out, ever, anywhere. Are they twins? Oh, twins, oh, twin, 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 twin. But it really doesn't bug me. One thing that you would tell yourself the day you found out you were having twins. Hmm, it almost makes me cry. Hmm, let me think. I think I would just tell myself, this is a good thing. That makes me cry. <laughs> this is a good thing, because I was, very afraid to have twins. I thought it was a bad thing. I did not want twins. I thought it was gonna be way too much work. I didn't want my body to grow two babies and have those changes. Um, I thought about like the financial burden. I just thought of how am I gonna breastfeed two babies? How am I gonna go out in public? I just was only thinking of the negatives. And again, I don't know any different than twins, but I think if I could do it all over again, if I had the choice, I would choose to have the twins. For a while, I would say, I love you both, but I wish I had you at different times. Cause it is really hard, of course it's hard. I like having twins. I feel like I'm meant to be a twin mom. But yeah, I would tell myself, this is a good thing. It's gonna be good. Do your twins wake each other up if one is crying or making noise during sleep? No, and it's incredible. <laughs> It's wild. I mean, sometimes they get, they they will like scream if one of them's really unhappy, you know, they can't sleep, whatever. The other one does not wake up and I 
have them yet in their own cribs next to each other in a nursery. They share a room. Do they sleep better without breastfeeding? I never, I didn't really notice a difference. People said they were gonna do better once we introduced more formula, but I never noticed a difference for our babies. Were Harper and Hudson's names the first choice? Were there any more in mind? I actually have a YouTube video up of all of our favorite names. Harper was always my favorite girl name. I love like the name Charlotte, which is really popular right now. Um, I love Isla, we almost did Isla. So there's a few different like girl names that are really cute. Hudson, I like liked, I like the name Hudson and then Alec really liked Hudson, but Harper and Hudson was just so perfect and he's such a Hudson and she's such a Harper. So we never put like intense thought into it. We just wanted to pick names that we liked and sounded good together as twins. Um, how do you get them um, to nap without being rocked or held. Besides like the newborn, newborn days, there's only one time ever that Harper has taken a nap with me holding her. Um, I think with twins, you just like, I couldn't. I mean, I could uncomfortably sit in my rocking chair and like hold them, but it wasn't this like really sweet bonding thing for me. It was more like, it was hard. And if they were wiggling and crying and I have two of them, I didn't enjoy doing that. So I didn't do it that often. So they never really got used to that. So yeah, they get loved on many, many, many ways, but rocking to sleep was never really something we did with them. Um, lots of questions. People just want to know more about their personalities, what makes them unique from each other. Um, yeah, Huddy, I mean, I feel like I say this a lot and you can really tell usually in our videos and on Instagram, like Huddy is so um, cuddly. He's pretty calm. Um, he will just like lay, I mean, he loves to lay on his back on me, like just laying on the floor. He just likes to lay on me and he'll like look up at the ceiling. <laughs> He's really funny though. He loves to make loud noises, which is something we're working on because it doesn't matter when we're at home. So if he screams, I'll scream back and we'll go back and forth and it's funny. But now he likes to do that out in public and it's not cute at a restaurant. <laughs> so he definitely has a big personality too, but he's a lot more calm. Harper is super goofy. She loves when I like chase her. We do peekaboo with like our little tunnel. I feel like they're really smart, but in different ways. Like Hudson right now can do all these different animal sounds we're working on, but Harper doesn't do that. But Harper can do, um, like more motor skills, like putting balls and toys and stacking cups, which Hudson doesn't do. So that's been really interesting. It's super weird, super weird having twins. And just over the past year, like Harper crawled a good month before Hudson started to crawl. And Hudson had like four teeth before Harper had one. So it's been weird watching them develop different things at different times, but being the exact same age. How did you end breastfeeding? Are the twins still wanting it sometimes? Nope. Um, we weaned slowly and they always got bottles from the very beginning, even with breast milk in it. So that was never an issue introducing a bottle. It was not that hard. It was more like emotional for me, but not even that much. Cause at 10 months is when I stopped and I was like ready to stop. I don't know. I feel like it wasn't that big of a deal. And I tried not to make it a big deal. Like, oh, this is it. Oh, it's like, okay, let's just carry on. Like everyone's fine. And no, I never felt like they missed it. They never like tried to breastfeed off of me. Um, and then like how I started weaning, I feel like around six months, I started introducing a bit of formula. Like I would put some in their bottles mixed with breast milk when they were demanding more. And then my supply wasn't doing what it needed to do to keep up with that. So we just slowly introduced greater amounts of formula over like the span of four months. So then naturally I would pump less, right? Started like skipping a pump, you know, and then you start doing that and it really starts to go down. So it happened pretty naturally. How did you get the twins to be good sleepers? Any sleep training? What meth or what what month did you try? So we use taking care of babies. Um, basically, all you really need to know for the beginning is easy method: eat, awake, sleep, you time. So that's what we did in the beginning, and then around six months, we tried to do her ABCs of sleep. We put them down, and then if they were crying, we would do three minutes, and then go in and just like put your hand on them and go shh give them their pacifier or something and then you know then leave and if they were still crying we would give it five minutes do the same thing if they're still crying I would go in after eight minutes and we never had to go past that point they would always fall asleep it was only hard for maybe like two nights and not even that hard it really was not that bad but that lasted for like a week and then they kind of regressed which they do but they it, they never got better until nine months we started from scratch doing that again and it worked again in like a night or two and ever since then they're super good sleepers it's really really rare that they wake up during the night at all we put them to bed at 7 30 and they usually sleep until 7. i highly recommend doing that but yeah for our babies it didn't click until nine months so until then we were up a lot i mean from like six to nine months it was rough there were some nights i was up 10 times 
and I was breastfeeding still too, so that's what they would want. They would cry and then they would not go back to sleep until I would nurse them. You know, sometimes it'd be like two minutes or five minutes. They just were using it almost like as a pacifier. And that's something too. I mean, I think around five or six months, probably like six, is when they were able to start putting, finding their pacifiers and putting them in their mouth. That is a game changer. That is a great day when that happens because until then, um, yeah, if they were crying, we had to go in and put their pacifier in and it's just a lot. The best toys for this age, my boys are 11 months old. Um, I know like I work with them, but love every, I love their toys. They're great. I feel like my babies actually are learning when they use them. I watch like their brains develop patterns using them. They're like nice toys, um, really like good quality, you get books, all sorts of fun fun things. So I really recommend Love Every. Um, I have these little suction spinner toys that my babies love. Um, I will link that. We also got this little plastic slide for our playroom that they love. Else we love our Buzz Lightyear toy with the buttons on it. They love pushing buttons on things. They love balls, like the dollar section of Target usually has like, this was three bucks, like this soccer ball that they love to play with. Um, they have a little toy kitchen. They love playing with toy food in there, stacking cups. Um, we do a lot of books. I also have these um, I got from Amazon. They're like these big puzzles with like different shapes and colors. Yeah, and honestly, sometimes those bright, colorful, noisy toys. They really love those and those are great in a pinch. We have a couple emergency toys that if they're really losing their mind, turn the bunny on with the ears and they're good to go. So it's good to have one of those on hand if you are more aesthetic Montessori mama with not a lot of noisy toys. Just get a Buzz Lightyear for backup. I'm trying to think if there's any other little tips I have for being a twin mom. Um, I think it's just overall this past year, it was not as scary as I thought it was going to be. I also think it's really crazy how quickly you forget. Like I can feel it thinking about it that it was hard. Like, like I've been saying those first six months were very hard. Maybe I just felt like I got the hang of it after six months. Obviously when they learned to like sleep through the night at nine months, when they could crawl and grab their own toys instead of getting frustrated because it's right there, but they can't get it. Like those are hard days. It's, it is really hard, but it, um, maybe I was just really prepared for it to be like this horrible, hard thing. And then it wasn't, and it's just so joy filled. You have two babies, like how fun, like it's so fun. You have two of them and it's been so fun having a boy and a girl. I'm sure two boys is fun. I'm sure two girls is fun, but having a boy and a girl has been really fun. Um, like I said, watching them develop different things at different times while sometimes was concerning. So I'm like, is this normal? Is this normal? Like I Google a lot, but I also recommend not Googling because everyone is gonna see something different. I feel like also being a twin mom, I get a lot less like advice from people in a good way, like unsolicited advice, because they'll start to tell me something and then they're like, oh, well, I don't have twins. I'm like, yeah, I know it's different, yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's a perk. Um, but yeah, I feel like try to find twin moms on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I try my best in my downtime um, to get to DMs and help answer questions for other twin moms out there because it's like you just, it's just different. Not to sound like high and mighty, like, oh, you're not a twin mom. Oh, you don't get it then. It's not like that. It's just, it really is different from what I heard and what I've talked to my other moms with just singleton babies. Having twins just is really different. So being able to find twin moms to talk to about that stuff has been really helpful for me. Yeah, it's all gonna be okay. If you're pregnant with twins, it's you're probably really scared or you're maybe really excited. You just know it's really hard and it's really, really fun and you'll be okay. And you'll hit a year and you're like, what? A year? That's crazy. Like how, do, how are we at a year? So. So if you have any more questions, please comment them below. I will be reading through the comments, answering what I can. Um, and I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you guys so much for following along with us. Um, if you've been here since pregnancy, pre-pregnancy, um, seeing everything that we've gone through, it's just so incredible to go back and see like how tough my pregnancy journey was and all the things that were going wrong and that we thought could go wrong even when they were born. And then they've just been happy, healthy little babies. So um, I appreciate you being here and for liking this video if you thought it was good. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.